In this video, we're going to focus on how we can add up sublabels at the very bottom of our x-axis, making it more clear which is a specific week. And you can see here week one, and then here we have another one, week number two. So let's start to explore how to add sublabels below the x scale in chart.js. So the first thing what we need is we need to go to chartjs3.com getting started, this specific link here. And this link you can also find in the description box. Scroll down. I just copy this entire chunk of code here. So if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video that explains it all. And then what I will do is I just paste it all in there. I will cut out this title here, put it in there. Save this, refresh, there we are. So now we have this here. And what I want to do next is I want to start to put in these sub labels below here. But to do that, I need space here because right now there's just two less white space to put a proper text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here and what I'm going to say here in the options, I'm going to say layout. I'm going to put in here the layout object, oh, layout object. And in the layout object, I'm going to say padding and then specifically padding bottom. And we can say here, maybe 30 pixels. If I save this, just pay attention here and refresh. You see here now we have some extra white space here. And now our fonts or our sub label can be added in here. So what I want to do is I want to double this one here. And this is basically a cosmetic trick. So remember that. So it requires probably some uh, hard coded customization from your site. So what I'm going to do here is basically I'm going to put in two weeks. And then I want one to be uh, one item will be week one. And the other part will be week number two. So in here. I'm going to scroll down here and we're going to start working on a custom plugin. We're going to say a plugins. And I'm going to say here, let's say uh, sub labels. Copy this. And I'm going to create the sub label object. So what I'm going to say here is plugin or the sub label plugin block. And I'm going to say constant sub labels. And this sub labels, we have the ID and the ID is the sub labels here, comma. And then we're going to say here the drawing time. In this case, the drawing time at the bottom doesn't matter so much, but we can do it after the data set has been drawn. At that very moment, you want to draw the labels here. So we're going to say here after, and I'm going to say here data sets with an S draw. And in here, we can say here three objects, although we only use the first object here chart. We have here the arguments, and we have here the plugin options although we won't be using the last two so that doesn't matter and equal to this we won't be using this as well because these two are basically together so it doesn't matter just focus on this because this is the one that we need so in here we're going to use this chart because if you do a console log here on the chart you will see what it all contains and what we need to extract from it if i save this refresh open up developer tab you can see here we get a lot of items but what i really need is the ctx and the ctx here is basically oh there you are it, it highlights immediately the canvas so what we want to do is we want to draw on the canvas new text or add new text on here so this is very important for us but also the chart area why the chart area helps us to identify the area and what we want to do is we want to have after the chart area at the bottom you can see here after 291 pixels at the moment we want to start drawing the text so this is becoming very important for us and the width as well. So we can calculate the width, which would be the starting point of the chart area, which is the left side all to the right. Although there is, if you look at it in the canvas, there is still more space here, but I don't want this space. This space here in pixels is the left side is 27 pixels. All right. So now we have the most important things, and I'm going to show you why this becomes very important. So let's create a uh, object destructuring. So instead of what we just did, because you just saw how we get there, for example, here to chart area, and then we say uh, left, this is a far too hard way to do it or too long. So we're going to use object destructuring that makes this a shorter way. So I'm going to say here constant, then he curly braces, and then here we say chart. And then within here, we're going to put in all the objects that was inside that chart, which is the CTX, here's the chart area. And in the chart area specifically, left, right, top, bottom. Maybe we don't even need the top, but that's all right. And then we have the width and height if necessary. Although most likely we probably will be working with the left, right, and the bottom. But we'll see. 
having them all actually files, yes, it's all right. We can always delete them afterwards. So once we have this, now we can start to work on drawing the text. So what I want to do now is I'm going to say here, ctx.save to save all the settings we have above. And then we're going to start drawing the text. I'm going to say ctx, as you remember that we have here. I'm going to say in this ctx, ctx.font. And in this here, we have to first define the font style, the font size, and the font family. So in this case, I want to make this bolder, so it will be nice bold. 12 pixels, which is a default size also on the canvas, or in chart yes. And then finally, uh, sun serif. So once we have that, that's the font family that chart yes also uses. The next thing what I want to do is I want to have the color. So I'm going to say ctx.fill style. And then this fill style, we can use the color here. Usually it's hashtag triple six, but we can also use if you want to do RGBA. 102, 102, 102. And comma, I guess one for solid value. So it's the alpha value is solid. And this is basically the equal to triple six. So that's the RGBA color version. So then what I want to do here, I want to start to draw the text. So I'm going to say a CTX fill text. And then this fill text will consist of the text. So let's say here, week, number one, and then we have here the x and y value. So I'm going to play around with the x and y value now. So we have this one here. We already have here a few items. What we do know is the following. We know we have here the width. But the width is from this point to that. However, if you're going to put in two texts, here will be week one. We want it here in the center. And this will be week two. will be also here in the center. So we need to figure out what is the center area here. Well, how we can do it is basically this here divide by four because then we have first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and final quarter. And after the first quarter, the center, this is the place where you want to put in the first week one. And then in the third quarter, somewhere here, will be week number two. So let's start to do that. So I'm going to say here, to make it very easy, we're going to say here uh, width divide by four. And then, of course, remember what I said about the space here. This is the left side. So we need to plus left. So for the Y, I'll make it very simple. I'll just say here the bottom. The bottom is not the right answer because we just only push it to this line here. However, if I just save this just to see how it looks like, we get now something. And then you say, hold on. The week is not in the center. How come? The reason why is it's at the starting point is the center is the starting point. But of course, it is text aligned left, meaning ignore the left side and start at the right side. So what we need to do here is text align center. So it will be pushed into the center. So what I'm going to do here is enter CTX text align. And then we're going to say here will be center. Save that. Refresh. There we are. So now we are beautifully in the center, but I want to push this down. So let's push this down. How do we do that? Well, with the bottom here. Remember our Y value this is the bottom. So we could increase here, for example, maybe 30 pixels. If I do this, plus 30, and you can see we're going down here now. If you're wondering why plus and not negative, well, the top here is considered zero, and the bottom is considered the maximum height of the canvas. How do you know the maximum height? If you look at it, look at the tooltip at the very top, 700 in width. Here is zero, this is 700, and the top is zero, and this is 350. So that's basically here the full height. So then what I want to do here is plus 40, save. That might be more better. All right, so now I have the first one. What I want to do is I want to have the second one, but I will not duplicate the code like this here. What I want to do here is, of course, to create a function. And I just push every time the new item within that function. So I'm going to say the function, and this function is uh, what we can call our... Uh, label or sublabel text, sublabel, uh, sublabel text, because I want to avoid the same name as here, if not we get too much confusion. And then in here, I'm going to cut out all, put it in there, and there we are. All right, so now we have this, and then what I want to do here is basically three items. I want to have the text here, I want to have a specific X value and a specific Y value. So to do that, you can see here this, we have to uh, change that, but what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just say here, sublabel text, 
we're going to just replace this week here in there. So that's the first one, week number one, and make sure that this is all caps lock. Comma, and here with the X value. So the X value in this case, I'm going to copy this part here. Well, I just leave the left here because this is a static value that we will not change all the time. So this would mean that this can be now converted to text and this can be converted into X. And here, bottom plus 40, I assume this will be very static as well, except that it will move. However, the moving is on the horizontal level, meaning the X value. So maybe we can just remove this and let's leave this all as it is. So if I do this now and if I save this, you'll see nothing really changes. It does the same, except that it just understands now this structure. Because if I do here now week two, save, refresh, there you are. All right, so now I want to do another one here. Let's do that. You can just copy this. I'm going to put it in here, and this is week one. So then we have week two. So week two, we need to move this a bit more. So let's say we're going to move this, or how will we move this? Remember, this is divided by four. So basically 25%. So the next one would be here, and that would be basically 75%. So what we can do here is, we're going to just say here, multiply, or what we can do here, multiply by one. And this one here, if I do multiply by two, we'll see what happens, refresh, it moves here. So I want to move a little bit more, so multiply by three, save that, refresh, and there we are. So now we have this, and we could even put in here maybe some lines to make it a bit bold line here. So it will even distinguish this a bit more. But that's, that will be for another video. But this is basically how you can put in this here nicely. So if you enjoyed this video, and maybe you want something else, there's another item that I highly recommend you to explore as well, which is how to use day ticks and hour ticks in the x-axis. And more specifically, this could be even done differently with days, weeks, and years. And you can see here what happens is basically it highlights a specific hour and then you have the minutes here being differently designed. And that might be an option as well instead of having sublabels.